All right, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. Today's date is 3.30, exactly 10 p.m. So it is 3.30, 18, 10 p.m. So today we are going to just do some very different tests of the big giant coil and magnet over here. The tests I want to do is configuring the coil in unconventional ways. Um, we do this type of test on the rodent coil and similar other aspects of things. And today we're going to be doing that on this ginormous um, Newman style coil. One big giant 80 miles of wire on a big spool here, number 30. So we're going to configure these things in this fashion that I'm going to explain. We're going to take these measurements and I just want to compare the results. This is just to demonstrate to you what I'm doing here, showing you the results and that's it. There's no real conclusions except what we have as the results and no claims or anything here. Just trying something different. Um, so in the last video, I connected this coil in a way which I disconnected the ends of the coil and it was just an open-ended coil. So the coupling between the two coils is so great capacitively, possibly inductively, um, that it's almost as if no change happens. It's, it's just, it's very different. It's uh, an unconventional way of looking at a coil. So in test number one, all right, we have the, both these coils. All right, I have a red wire, a gray wire, a white wire, and a black wire. And I will show you these on the bench. Those wires are in order, one, two, three, four. So one and two is the first coil. It's on the inside. And then three and four is the outside coil. It's just wrapped on the outside. So it's a coil on top of a coil. All right, one and two is in the inside, three and four is on the outside. I have a two inch neodymium magnet spinning on the inside of this coil. And then I have a full wave bridge, and then I have that connected to a capacitor. Um, the capacitor is 0.85 microfarads, UF, and the capacitor is 2000 volts rated, but we can run it up to three and probably not hurt it. And the things we are wanting to measure, okay, is the mean current with the cap disconnected, all right, the mean current with the cap charged, RPM with the cap disconnected, RPM with the cap charged, max voltage of capac uh, of the capacity, uh, the max voltage of the capacitor charge. So I'll show you how the setup is. This will make sense in a second. And then the time to reach the max cap voltage. And then what we're going to do is we're going to measure the area under the curve of the input, and we are going to measure the voltage of the input, and we're going to come up with a value called volt amp seconds to charge to a thousand volts. So the max voltage will take forever to get there, so we're, we're picking that charge curve and we're saying 1000 volts is what we're using for that. So that's the volt amp seconds to charge, all right? Area under the curve and the voltage. Now, what I want to do is I am going to basically connect the cap with and without, and we have input as a motor, which I'll show you, running the device. So we're spinning the magnet with a motor, we're measuring the voltage and the current on the input. That's where those measurements are coming from. So the configurations is conventional here. We got one and two, three and four connected basically as a big spool of wire and the outputs are going to the full wave to the cap. Test number two, we've got one and two, okay, and three and four connected the same except We've just removed the connection between two and three. So the coils are wrapped on top of each other and we just disconnected the one in the middle. So you have an outside coil and an inside coil connected to the full wave bridge to the cap. You can see here we just removed this jumper between two and three. Test number three, we are going to run these guys against each other. So one and two, three and four, we're gonna be jumpering two to four and we're going to be using one and three as our output to the full wave bridge to the cap. And then on test four, we're just going to be removing this jumper. So on test two and three, these are open-ended coils configured uh, one way and the other way. And then test one and two are conventionally closed circuit coil connections. Um, this one has a conventional coil, this one has, uh, has opposite directions. So with all of this information, 
we should see which one of these configurations charges the cap to a thousand volts right in the shortest amount of input power. Now I did some tests already and I, I made the RPM higher, I made the RPM lower, I changed a bunch of parameters and I tried to see if over a range of input um, RPM if the results are different and they are slightly so we've picked the range Richard is here helping me uh, on on the, via the internet and we set up the experiment to get in the ballpark where everything is pretty well um, balanced the best we can if I go too high the thing jumps teeth because it slams to a stop um, as it's trying to charge the capacitor if I go too low I can't bring the voltage up fast enough so we've we've picked a happy medium so I'm going to give you an overview of the setup. We'll do the tests and we'll come back to the whiteboard after we fill it all in. This is going to take me a while, you a short time. So let me show you what we got on the bench. All right, so we've got the big coil here. We've got the two inch magnet on the inside. Um, I'll show you the configuration there a little closer in a second. And then we've got each one of our wires connected down here. So you can see I've gotten writ written on the table one, two, three, and four color change there. Then we've got that coming over here to the full wave bridge and then we've got the capacitor connected to that. Um, so let's see if I can get close without damaging anything here with that big magnet. We've got a, a DC geared uh, gear motor here. You can see it's geared down. Belt driven over here. We do have a uh, flywheel weight, brass weight on there. The um, connection here for the commutator is just disconnected. And then this goes down and drives that two inch magnet down inside of that big coil. Um, here you can see we have a power supply. This power supply is connected to that DC motor. So this is our input. And then we are measuring the magnet spinning going to the cap full wave bridge between configuring these guys differently. So what I'm doing to test this is I'm disconnecting the capacitor like that. I'm turning on the power supply. Okay, so the power supply will be on and we are going to get a measurement on the oscilloscope here. Okay, the measurement is going to be a constant voltage and constant current input. We're going to check the RPM of that. All right, then over here the guy is spinning. All right, as you can see, and that's how we're getting our constants before. And then what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to just connect the cap like that and as you heard the thing just slowed way down and it'll slowly speed up as the cap charges and then we're going to take our measurement once the cap is fully charged okay so the yellow is the voltage on the cap the green is the current going to the little motor the purple is the voltage going to the little motor and the blue is the current going into the cap but we're kind of ignoring it we're not using it for anything it's just on the screen and then uh, basically that's the entire test. So the idea is to configure the coil in all different configurations that we've discussed and go from there. So let's get started on the testing. All right, so here we go. The yellow is the cap voltage. And what you'll notice is uh, it's not really zero. That's because it's got such a uh, broad range of voltage. It's a high, uh, high voltage probe, so it doesn't really read low voltage very well. So keep that in mind. So here we go. We're going to fire it up and let it get to a steady state. We've already discharged the cap and then we will connect the cap. We want to take an average reading of everything. So right now we're in number one, configuration number one. So we'll let it settle there for a second. Okay, I'm going to connect the cap. And you can see what happened there. Slowed down pretty good. And as the capacitor is charging, looks like I could probably zoom in a little bit closer for the next one. We're pretty far out there. So we'll let it get to a pretty steady state. And then we're just basically going to take all of our measurements from that screen right there. All right, so you can see on the screen here, I did all the other calculations. I wanted to show you what this one actually looks like. So this is what we're calculating for the, um, the volt amp seconds. So we've got the voltage that the power supply is at, 
and we have the milliamp seconds. We're converting it to amp seconds, um, and then doing the calculation, uh, which is uh, volts over amp seconds, and that gives us our power um, input that's between the cursors there. So I'm just aligning the cursors to match at our 1000 volt charge and then doing the area under the curve calculation for the current. So yeah, just wanted to kind of brief you on exactly how we were measuring that. All right, here we go. So test number two, this is the one and four connected only. We basically just removed the connection between the two coils. So we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna let it average out so we can get our average input and RPM. That's pretty good. So now we're going to connect the capacitor. We'll let it settle out here and get our measurements. So you can see it appears to be fairly similar even though there's no closed connection at all. Which is rather an interesting thing. But uh, that's why we're doing these tests to demonstrate that. That looks pretty good. So we'll get our measurements. All right, so here is the screenshot of the calculations there. Moving on to the next test. All right, so here we are. Now we are on test number three. We've got one and two, uh, two to four, three going out. I know it's confusing. I'll throw it up on the screen. So now we are going to test number three configuration. I'm going to turn it on. Cap is discharged. Here we go. So we are running, it looks like a pretty good average. We will connect the cap now. And that's pretty well the test. All right, so as you can see, we only got up to, uh, well, about 485 volts, so we're not even going to include because we didn't get to a thousand volts. Apparently my earlier tests were a little different, so we're just going to basically ignore what it took to get to this uh, on the volt amp seconds, and we're going to move on to test number four. All right, so we are testing number four now. We have removed the short between the wires two and four. And now we're going to get a completely different result. Here we go. So turned on, let it settle out. Now we will charge the cap. Now we're going way past our uh, smaller voltage we had last time, which is a good deal. Looks like it's pretty settled out, so. We'll stop it and get our calculations. All right, so just quick update. The original measurement for number one was slightly off because <clears throat> of the, uh, the, it's supposed to be measuring between the cursors and it was not. So we've redone it and remapped it. And what you see on the screen is the new result. All righty then. So we've completed all our tests. We actually did a, a few extra tests, which I'll explain in one second. And uh, we came up with this conclusion right here. So this actually I need to erase because we didn't do that. Okay, so for most, well for all of the tests right here, including the one where we didn't get to our higher voltage, so we didn't even calculate this one here because we could, didn't reach a thousand volts, we were putting six volts in, all right, and the RPM was a little lower than what I kind of wanted. However, um, which you'll see here in this eight volt input one, uh, there's a dramatic difference, which I can't go too high and actually do this test or I start jumping teeth and ruining things and set screws start coming loose. So, so yeah, this is our, uh, this is our chart. Okay. You can see all that data. And now what I'm going to show you is the eight volt input. Okay. So we're doing a little bit higher input. Okay. The RPM was 368. Here is only, uh, that was, uh, that's actually after, okay. This RPM is after charge. So after charge is 235, here it's 368, so pretty big difference. 
270 milliamps uh, with the uh, cap connected. And then here, okay, that's number one, all right? And this was number four, so this data is all number four, 383 RPM, all right, versus 270, and then 242 milliamps, all right, versus the 219. Now the difference, though, is in our six volt input, okay, we actually got a volt amp seconds to charge to a thousand volts, all right, of 4.2. Here we were at about 3.64. Now the big difference is here. Here it only took 2.3 volt amp seconds at a higher RPM, okay, and with less of a uh, initial input um, when we connected that cap, which you'll see in the footage, right, versus our 3.91. So here was actually better at a slower RPM, and here was actually better for four, okay? Better for one at a slower RPM, but better for four at a higher RPM, and it didn't drag the system down as much, and yet we still charged to 1,000 volts with less input compared to test number one. So we only did one and four at the higher voltage. So anyway, I hope this was useful, and, um, you know, I just wanted to demonstrate this because I've done so many little tests like this and I haven't filmed most of them. I've just been trying to do stuff and learn stuff and see the result, but this stuff's important to share, so I, I try to film it as I can. So what I'm gonna show you right now is the difference between these two. I'm gonna put them side by side and I'm gonna let you watch them and you can see the major difference between a higher RPM configured as number one and a higher RPM configured as number four when the load is connected. It's pretty dramatically different. Um, and this tells the story, charging to a thousand volts. It's almost uh, twice um, charges. Well, I guess in this case, it's half of the amount of power input to charge to a thousand volts. Okay, and you'll see that in the footage, so. All right, God bless you guys. Have a good day. It is now 1134 and I am tired. took an hour and a half, and I have to go edit many pieces of footage into this. So, all right, thanks, you, uh, thanks to Richard. Richard was here helping me with uh, some of the math and make sure I didn't screw anything up. Um, and thanks to my buddy Steve for uh, brainstorming some of these thoughts into my head and making me think a little different about this system. So, all right, watch this footage, check it out. Read the Bible more. I promise it'll help. Bye-bye. Okay, so I've repeated test number four, but I've raised the voltage of the input, um, and the results are what you see on the screen. So I'm going to add those to our list. So I, I raised it to eight volts input, and, and it's, a, it's a totally different result. And that's kind of what I want to show is the, the difference between uh, RPM and how the coil is configured. So we're going to do test number one, one more time at a higher RPM, and check those results. All right, this is test configuration number four at uh, a higher RPM input. So here we go, cap is disconnected and connecting cap. So there you go. Now we will rerun test number one at the same uh, voltage input on the little motor. Okay, so the reason I'm doing this, uh, this is test number one at a higher RPM, is because I want to show you the difference of how one bogs it down to almost a stop and the other one does not. So here we go. So you can see it actually tried to jump some teeth when I turned it on there. Now watch what happens when I connect the cap. Much different reaction. So that, that tells us that we, uh, we definitely have less interaction of uh, the magnet and the coil whenever we do this differently. Now we're almost to 4,000 volts, so I'm going to turn this thing off here. We'll get a quick measurement. Four at uh, a higher so RPM you can see it actually tried to jump so some teeth when I turn it on there. Cap is disconnected. Now watch what happens when I connect and cap. connecting cap. Much different reaction. So there you go.
So that that tells us that we yeah. uh, we will we definitely have rerun test interaction one at the of, uh, same the magnet on the coil whenever we input on the different